Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Ahmad El Fakharani. I am a lead DevOps engineer. Learning new tools could be overwhelming in a heavily crowded technical world of new technologies. If you are a DevOps engineer or you want to be one, you must constantly be updated with the latest in the market. In this video, I will walk you through working with Helm, one of the most demanded DevOps tools. But before we start, I expect that you know your way around Kubernetes. At least you know how to deploy a sample application to the cluster. With that out of the way, let's get started. So Helm is a package manager. But what is a package manager? For example, we use package managers on Linux to manage software installations. That is, install, manage, and when necessary, uninstall an application. Let's give an example. In Ubuntu, if you need to install Nginx, the well-known web server and reverse proxy, we'd issue the following command, sudo apt install nginx. In a few seconds, nginx will be installed on your system. We can double check that we have a working nginx installation by opening a browser window and going to localhost. We see the famous nginx welcome page. But the apt package manager has done much work behind the scenes to make this happen. For example, we have an nginx configuration file with default values deployed to slash edc slash nginx slash nginx.conf. We also have the nginx binary under slash usr slash asbin slash nginx. And we have the startup script under the systemd directory, which contains all the required command line options for nginx to be started, stopped, and restarted. All of this has been done automatically as soon as we ran apt install nginx. There are different package managers for different operating systems. For example, Ubuntu uses apt, Fedora uses yum or dnf, Mac OS has homebrew, Windows has chocolatey, scoop, and others. Kubernetes is often referred to as the cloud operating system. Kubernetes enables you to deploy distributed microservices through containers in almost any environment. So let's say that we want to deploy nginx to a Kubernetes cluster. At least we need the following a deployment that will manage the nginx pod or pods, a service so that we can expose our web server to the cluster or outside the cluster, an ingress in case we want to deploy also a load balancer, a config map to hold the server configuration, some secrets perhaps, maybe a service account and some RBAC rules, in addition to maybe other manifests. With a simple command like helm install nginx, the entire deployment is automated for you. In helm's terminology, a package is referred to as a chart. It contains all the necessary files that would install the application to Kubernetes. They can be written in YAML or JSON. In this video, however, we will stick to YAML as it is more human readable and easier to understand and explain. Now, let's see how we can install Helm. So we go to helm.sh and obviously you need to have a working Kubernetes cluster. In this lab, we are using Kubernetes in Docker or Kind for short, since it can be installed easily on any laptop or any operating system. However, the very same procedure can be applied to any Kubernetes cluster. So just use your own and you'll be okay. Now we move to install Helm. Helm is written in Go, meaning that it is a self-executable binary file. It does not need any dependencies to work. So the easiest way to install Helm is to download the binary file that works for your system. Those can be found on the official releases page. In this lab, I'm running on Ubuntu Linux, so I will click on Linux AMD64. This will download a tar archive that contains the binary file. Now, let's go to our terminal and uncompress our downloaded file. The archive contains the binary file, the license, and the readme. Actually, this is all we need to install Helm. We can just start using it right away. For example, let's just run Helm version. And as you can see, it is working. However, to avoid having to type the whole path to our Helm binary whenever we need to use it, let's move it to a location in our path. For example, let's run sudo mv linux amd64 helm to slash usr slash local slash bin. This way we can run Helm from anywhere on our system and it will just work. This is by far the easiest way to install Helm, but it has one downside though. Whenever there is a new Helm version, you must manually download it from their GitHub releases page. If you prefer a less complex procedure, you can just use your operating systems package manager. So we can use Homebrew for Mac OS, Chocolatey for Windows, and apt or snap for Ubuntu. It's your own choice. 
The final method of insulation, of course, is building Helm from source. This is of special use if you are a developer or if you want to get the bleeding edge Helm releases as soon as they are released or even before they are released. However, this option requires that you have a Go environment installed and also some Go code skills. At least you should know how to build a Go package. So now that we have Helm installed, let's install our first chart. A Helm package is called a chart. It contains all the files that Kubernetes needs to deploy an application. Those files are stored inside a directory that holds the chart's name. So for example, if we were to install the WordPress Helm chart, we'd find a WordPress directory containing several files and directories. We're going to examine the contents of the chart later on. But for now, you need to know that a chart is what Helm calls its package and it's just a directory with a well-known structure and it holds the same name as the chart. Since Helm was introduced, many teams and organizations created and shared charts. With thousands of charts out there, there needed to be a way to organize them to be easily searchable and accessible to users. Thus, we started having Helm repositories where several charts can be stored and indexed. There are many Helm chart repositories online. A repository is nothing but a web server that contains an index.yaml file that lists all the charts included in this repository. The chart itself is stored in compressed format, just .tar.gz. It is possible to keep the chart's compressed file on a server that is different than the one containing the index.yaml file. For example, we could have this index.yaml file on a web server of our own, and we store the chart itself on an S3 bucket. However, in most of the cases, the chart and the index.yaml files are stored in the very same server. Now, since Helm version 3.8.0, which was released back in 2022, we could store our charts in Docker registries. This means that we can store the chart as if it was a, just a Docker image. We can pull it, we can push it, we can deal with it the same way we deal with Docker images. So we can store it in any Docker compatible registry. This way we can pull and push a chart from Docker Hub, AWS ECR, Google GCR, or other registries as we do with Docker images. Those repositories are referred to as OCI repositories. More and more registries are converting to OCI because of the benefits it provides. With many chart repositories available online, some web services curated and indexed them. Perhaps the most well-known of them is the Artifact Hub. It contains many CNCF project artifacts, not just Helm. So, if, for example, you can find their kubectl, core DNS plugins, OPA policies, of course, Helm charts, and plugins. So, let's say that you want to install Nginx. As you can see, Nginx is offered by several repositories. Let's pick the one provided by Bitnami. The chart is hosted in Bitnami's OCI repository. Before we proceed, I want to make an important notice. The Helm client uses the same configuration that your kubectl client is using. To explain more, let's run kubectl config get contexts. We are currently using the kind cluster as we mentioned. This is the exact same info that Helm will use to install the chart. We don't want to install the chart to the default namespace, so let's create a new namespace. So kubectl create namespace, let's call it web. And let's change the current context to point to the new namespace by running kubectl config set context hyphen hyphen current hyphen hyphen namespace equals web. This way we can just run any kubectl or helm command and we are always pointing to the web namespace instead of having to supply hyphen hyphen namespace web whenever you want to run a command. Now let's double check that we indeed are pointing to the correct namespace before continuing. All right. To install the chart, we use the following command, helm install, then we supply the name of the installation. This is also referred to as a release in Helm's terminology. Our release will be called nginx01. Then we supply the URL to the OCI artifact that hosts the chart. Notice how we needed to supply the release name or the installation name if you wish to call it, nginx01. The reason is that Helm allows you to install several instances of the same chart to the same cluster simultaneously, even to the same namespace. The installation name here, or the release, is a way to differentiate between different installations or different instances of the same chart. The chart is configured to display a nice help message instructing us how to access Nginx. Let's start by examining the status of the service created for us. Notice that the chart automatically names the service Nginx01. This is to avoid naming collisions if you wish to install other instances of the same chart to the same namespace. We'll have Nginx 01, 02, 03, and so on. There will be no name collisions. The service that Nginx installed 
by default is of type load balancer, but we can change that. We're going to see how in a moment. So to access Nginx after it has just been installed and without modifying any values or any parameters of the chart, we need to use port forwarding. So to do that, first we need to get the pod name where Nginx is running. So we run kubectl get pods. We have only one pod of Nginx, so we copy the pod name. Then we run kubectl port forward. Let's paste the pod name and then we type 8080, which is the port that I want to use for accessing this service from the browser. Then call on 8080, which is the port where Nginx pod is listening. If you are using your local machine to follow this lab, then you should be you should be just okay. Just hit enter and go to the browser and navigate the local host called an 8080. But in my case, I'm using a virtual machine. So I don't want to restrict the port to local host. Otherwise, I will only be able to access this service if I am opening the browser from this virtual machine. Instead, I want to access this virtual machine from my own laptop. To do that, I will add hyphen hyphen address equals 0.0.0.0, allowing me to access the service remotely using the virtual machine's external IP address. So we open the browser and type the IP address of the virtual machine column 8080, and we have the famous Nginx welcome page displayed. Now, let's see what the Helm chart installed on our behalf. We can just run kubectl get all. We have a deployment that created a replica set, that created a pod, and we also have a service. There are many decisions that Helm already made on our behalf. To view that, let's edit the deployment manifest that the chart created for us. We have many options that we didn't choose, let's say, for example, the rolling update type, replica count, container arguments, the image pull policy, the resource requests and limits, and many other parameters. Depending on how the chart was designed, you may have the option to customize those values to your own preference. For example, the image pull policy is set to if not present. In Kubernetes, this means that if the Docker image has already been pulled before, like for the first time, and cached on the node, there is no need to pull it again so that you can save time and network bandwidth. Most of the time, you will want to keep this policy to if not present, so you want to keep it at the default. And this is one of the things that Helm charts do. They present same defaults in the default chart installation so that you don't need to modify them and you can just run Helm install and you will get a working application on your cluster without needing to do anything. However, in many cases, we want to tweak the settings in the deployment service volume or other manifests. For example, in high security environments, you may be instructed to set the image pull policy to always. The rationale here is that we want to ensure that we get the image from its original source over an encrypted connection rather than using a stored one that may have been tampered with. You get the idea? So whenever we run a deployment, Kubernetes will always go and fetch the image from its original source, whether that was Docker Hub or GCR or whatever. If we set this to if not present, then as long as the image is available on the node, it will always be used. They will use the cached version, but this cached version could be hacked or attacked, for example, or somebody with access to the node could have played with it or changed it to something else. So again, this is rather a strict option in high security environments, but sometimes you, want, you may want to do that. So how do we instruct our chart to change this image pull policy to always, which instructs Kubernetes to pull the image anyway, even if it was cached on the node? Helm allows you to customize chart installations using values. Values are nothing but a set of parameters stored in a hierarchical order. They can be fed to the chart at installation time or at upgrade time. This can be done either through a YAML file or through the command line arguments. Helm charts often have documentation explaining which values they accept and what data type each value can have. To view what values the Nginx chart that we are installing accepts, we need to return back to the artifact hub page and see the Nginx chart. On the right, we have the default values. Those are all the parameters that this chart accepts. If we want to change the image pool policy, it's under image pool policy. Image is the parent, pool policy is the child. So let's return to the terminal and create a file called values.yaml. Then we add image as the parent and pool policy indented to spaces to the right to follow the YAML rules. and we set this to always. We save the file, and what Helm does is that when it installs the chart, it uses this values file that we saw on the artifact hub page. These are the default values that are bundled with the chart. These are always applied to the chart whenever it gets installed. But if you want to override them, you can introduce your own values file with the parameters that you want to change. You don't need to specify all the parameters that are in the values file. Only the ones that you need to override should be specified. 
Helm is going to revise its values. If it sees values that you provided to it, it will take those overriding its own defaults. If you didn't define a value, it will use the default ones. So let's test this. Let's install a second Nginx Helm release, but we need to instruct Helm to use our values to the YAML file. So we add hyphen hyphen values, then the name of our file, which is values.yaml. This is one way of changing the chart parameters. The second way is by using the hyphen hyphen set command line flag. We're gonna see this in a little moment. Now, if we examine the deployment now, we will see that the image pull policy has been changed to always. This is one of the ways of changing values in a Helm chart. As we said, the second one is through the command line arguments. So assuming that we want to deploy an Nginx chart with two replicas instead of the default one. So returning to the artifact hub page to see if we have an, an, a value or an option that allows us to increase the replica count, we can use the search box at the top. We are searching for replicas, it is available under a value called replica count, which happens to be in the root of the hierarchy. So there is no parent key. You just write replica count and that's it. So we can use this info to install a third release of Nginx. This time, instead of supplying a values file, we can use the hyphen hyphen set command line argument specifying the replica count as two. If we specify a value nested under one or more parents, we can use the dot notation. For example, if we were to specify the image pull policy through the command line argument instead of using the values file, we could have specified it as image dot pull policy since it is nested under the image key. What if we are supplying the values using both methods at the same time? Like for example, we are installing a Helm chart using a values file for specifying some of our values and also using the hyphen hyphen set command line tool to specify another bunch of values. What would happen? Actually, this is a good practice and it is a recommended way to install Helm charts. To understand it, we need to explain the hierarchy of values in Helm charts. So the default values with the chart are the first in the list. They contain the same defaults that ensure that the chart will install correctly even without specifying any parameters. Then any values supplied through the values file override them. So for example, while the replica count is set to one in the default values to ensure that the chart deploys at least one pod, we are overriding this using the values file. Then finally, we have the parameters supplied as command line arguments. Those have the highest precedence. They should contain environment specific settings. So for example, if you have several environments like dev, QA, test, staging, and production, and you have a Helm chart that you need to deploy to all those environments at the same time, and you have your own values file that like, contain like some general defaults for each environment, you can use the hyphen hyphen set to fine grain exactly what values are going to those environments at installation time. This could also be handy in CI CD pipelines. For example, when you want to overwrite values on the fly just to test something, or to see what happens if this value changed it, or what happens if this value was not supplied. Those types of things are usually done using the hyphen hyphen set command line argument. Now, if you are enjoying this video so far, please check out my class, Helm, the Kubernetes Package Manager hands-on course on Udemy. It contains all what we are covering in this video, plus some extra topics, tips, and tricks. For example, search and install specific Helm chart versions, troubleshoot your chart installations, and use Helm history and rollback. Additionally, we cover some advanced topics like how to write complex templates using Go functions, how to install dependency charts, and store your Helm charts on several targets like AWS, S3 buckets, chart museums, and others. We also discuss Helm's integration with CI CD platforms like GitLab. Check it out. I will post a coupon that gives you over 90% discount on the class, and I will post the course link in the description below. If the coupon expires, please comment on this video and I will update it. All right, let's get back to our tutorial. If we want to list the charts installed in the cluster, we can run the helm list command. As you can see, we have three Nginx releases. Again, helm operates in the current kubectl context we have configured. So this means that the command that we have just run ran against the web namespace. But what if you want to like list all the helm releases that were installed on all the namespaces, like in the entire cluster? To do that, we can just add the hyphen hyphen all hyphen namespaces option to the command. This way we will get all the releases in all the namespaces on the cluster. Now, so far when we wanted to change one of the values of the Helm chart, we just deployed a new release. But in most of the cases, we just don't want to deploy a new release. We want to upgrade the existing one. We want to change the values of the existing one rather than create a second or third or fourth release. 
Helm offers the upgrade subcommand that allows us to update and install chart. For example, let's say we want to update the Nginx01 release to host two replicas instead of one. We can do this by running helm upgrade nginx01 hyphen hyphen set. Notice that we are using here the hyphen hyphen set command line argument. Then we set the replica count equals two. Following that, we add the OCI URL of the chart. Obviously, we could equally use a values file to change this parameter. Now, if we list the pods, we'll see two nginx01 pods. In unattended helm chart deployments, like in CI CD pipelines, for example, it becomes tricky to determine if the chart that we want to install is already there or not. Sometimes we need to perform an upgrade rather than a new installation. So we need to check whether the chart is installed already or not. If it is installed, then we perform an upgrade. Otherwise, we need to install a fresh chart. But the problem is that running an install against an existing chart will return an error. Similarly, running an upgrade on a non-existing chart will not work. Fortunately, Helm provides an easy solution to this paradox. So instead of relying on if conditions in shell scripts to get the available chart and see if it's there or not and accordingly install or upgrade, we can just run helm upgrade hyphen hyphen install. Helm will check first if the release in question is already running. If it is, then an upgrade is performed. Otherwise, an installation is done. So, whenever you are running helm in a CI CD pipeline, you should use this form to install or upgrade your charts as necessary. If you want to uninstall a chart, you can just use the helm uninstall subcommand. For example, if you want to uninstall the nginx02 release, we run a command like helm uninstall nginx02. Now, if we list the available pods in the web namespace, we'd find that we don't have nginx02 pods anymore. Helm uninstalls all the related manifests, like the deployments, the services, ingresses, anything that was installed as part of this helm release. However, there is an important notice that you need to be aware of. If the chart includes persistent volumes and persistent volume claims, uninstalling the chart does not automatically uninstall them. This is in fact a security precaution and it's a nice one, if you ask me. Volumes contain data that could be important and you don't want to lose it because we just uninstalled the chart by mistake. For example, the MySQL Helm chart includes a volume for data storage. When the chart is uninstalled, the volume stays there. This could be a lifesaver sometimes. The data is preserved if you uninstall the MySQL chart by mistake. You can easily recover it by just reinstalling the chart using the same values as, for example, the root password, or if you created a, uh, an admin user or some database users, just installing the charts with the same values will regain your data back from the volume. So this is a good thing to notice, but in some cases, people just uninstall charts and they just forget to delete the uh, related PPCs and PVs. So more often than not, you could find like your cluster has a lot of volumes, a lot of persistent volume claims that are just hanging around, perhaps consuming storage unnecessarily. So you'll need to be aware of this fact. When you uninstall a Helm chart that does include a volume, you will need to make sure that you perform garbage collection by removing any PVs or PVCs that were installed as part of this chart. So now we know what Helm is, what problems it tries to solve, how to install it, and how to install ready-made charts like the Nginx one. Let's now look at the anatomy of a Helm chart and explore how we can create our own. A Helm chart is a bunch of files and directories organized in a specific order, like we said before. For better visibility and in order to see those in action, let's create our own chart. Helm provides the create subcommand to scaffold the chart that automatically deploys the Nginx web server. Nginx was chosen because, well, it contains most of the manifests that any application would need. So it includes a deployment, a service, an ingress, and it contains also an HPA, like the horizontal pod autoscater. You can also augment it with a secret or a config map or a volume. So it contains like a boilerplate chart that could evolve in any chart of any kind, like any application could be installed. So what people does is that they create this boilerplate chart and then customize it to install virtually any Kubernetes application. In this lab, we are deploying the BusyBox application. BusyBox is a minimal image containing several Linux tools and commands. It is often used in troubleshooting scenarios. So once we run the Helm create BusyBox, we have a directory called BusyBox that is created for us. This is, this is actually a chart. This is where all the directories and files that make the chart exist. Let's get inside this directory and see what we have. For an even better view, we will open it in Visual Studio Code. You can use your own code editor if you want to. As you can see, at the root of the Helm chart lies the chart.yaml file. The chart.yaml file serves as the metadata file for a Helm chart. It's essentially the identity card of the chart, 
providing important information that Helm uses to manage the chart throughout its lifecycle. At the minimum, a chart.yaml file must include the following fields. The API version, which is usually v2 for Helm 3, which is the latest. The name uniquely specifies the name of the chart and the chart version. Helm recommends using semantic versioning, but you can just follow your own versioning schema if you want to. There are other optional fields that you can use for added functionality. So the three fields that we've talked about, these are mandatory, you have to add them to your chart. If you want to add more fields, there are some optional fields that you can fiddle with. For example, the description. This could contain a brief description of what the chart does. You have the keywords, which is an array of keywords about the chart. You can use this, for example, if you want to make your chart more searchable or more SEO friendly that search engines or indexers can easily find it. You can also have home, which defines the URL of the chart's project homepage. If you have a website that like serves your organization or your team or yourself, for example, you can just add this as a field to your chart or YAML file. The sources is a list of URLs to the source code of the chart. So for example, if you have a Git repository where you store the source code of this chart, you can just add this as a source. You can have multiple sources if you want to. For example, you can have the source of a chart, a source of the application that the chart deploys, and so on and so forth. In the maintainers part, you can have information about the chart maintainers, including yourself, like the names and email addresses. In the dependencies part, and this is an important one, here you can specify any dependent chart that your chart may have, including their versions. For example, if our Helm chart installs an application that will not work unless a back-end database or a cache server like Redis is up and running, we can have a child chart that deploys, for example, MySQL. When we deploy the application chart, MySQL with the specified version will be installed automatically. So now you don't have to worry about having an application installed or running without its necessary backend or cache server. If you install it as a dependent chart, it will always get installed whenever your application chart gets installed. The type here specifies the chart type. Most of the time you wanna use the application type. The application is, well, if you have an application like Nginx or Apache or WordPress or like an application that runs on the cluster. But sometimes if you are a developer or if you like if you're really into Helm, you can install a library chart. A library chart is like a module. If you're in a programming language like Python or Go, you have modules that you just download and make, make available to your code. A library chart just serves this purpose. So you can have a library chart that is installed as a dependency and library charts can only be installed as dependencies. Once it's there, it can provide extra functionality to your chart. Now, this was all for the chart.yaml file. But besides that file, we have the templates directory. This can be considered as the meat and potato of the chart. The templates directory includes what looks like YAML manifests for Kubernetes. For example, we have the deployment.yaml file, which defines a Kubernetes deployment. But notice that we cannot use kubectl apply hyphen f against a file like this. If we did, we would receive many errors from Kubernetes. Why? If you look closely at this file, you will see that while it looks like a valid YAML file, many lines contain double curly braces at the start and at the end. This is not YAML. This is a Go template. The YAML extension here is just for you to remember that this file will eventually get converted into a valid Kubernetes manifest. But how? When we run Helm install or upgrade, this file and other templates in the templates directory get parsed. Anything between the double curly braces is dynamic. It gets replaced at runtime according to the code that you have. For example, let's look at this part of the file. We want to define the replicas that this deployment will have. So since we want to allow the user to dynamically set this parameter to the values file or the hyphen hyphen set command line argument, we specify that this number should be brought from the values source under a key called replica count. But that's not everything. What if the user wants to use auto scaling, for example? In that case, the number of pop replicas should not be hard coded in the deployment since it will depend on factors such as the load on the cluster. The HPA will handle the replica count depending on the factors that it sees like CPU or memory pressure or something. So for that reason, we have an if condition before the replica count line that examines the value of auto scaling if enabled or not. If enabled, this means that the user intends to apply auto scaling to the cluster and we don't need to define a replica count. Maybe it's a good idea to look at the values file and see where this auto scaling is defined. The values file or the values.yaml is another file that gets created for us automatically as part of the scaffolding operation. If we scroll down a bit, we'd see that we have the auto scaling part. It has several child fields, including enabled, which is a Boolean value. Notice how we can refer to nested YAML fields using the dot notation, as we did when specifying them on the command line when we use the hyphen hyphen set argument. However, we have one important difference. 
When referring to values inside a chart template, we must inform Helm as to where they are getting those values from. The reason is that inside the chart template, we can get the values either from the values source, which we just mentioned, like from the values file or from the hyphen hyphen set command line argument, or from other sources, like for example, the chart.yaml file. Yes, the chart.yaml file can expose values, and yes, Helm chart resources can make use of those values. For example, in line 31, where the chart defines the container name, it uses the chart name. This chart name is brought from the chart.yaml file. In our case, it's called busybox. So that would be the container name. Container names are unique within the same pod. So the chart name here should be sufficient. There should be no ambiguity when we have several containers called busybox, but each one of them lives in its own pod. However, if we move to the resource itself, like the deployment or the service or the ingress or other resources that the Kubernetes cluster will be using, we cannot use the chart name to name those manifests. Can you guess why? Yes, you are perfectly right. Because we can deploy several chart releases from the same chart. If you remember, we installed three Nginx releases, Nginx 1, 2, and 3, all of which were in the same cluster and under the same namespace. If we named the manifest after the chart name, which is Nginx, we'd have name collisions. Instead, Helm relies on the release name to name the manifests. This is another source for values. So we saw the chart.yaml file, the values of the YAML file, now we have the release name. The release name here is a built-in value. It doesn't have a file like chart.yaml or values.yaml. You don't have, for example, release.yaml. But this is a built-in value that is generated when the chart is created. So you have access to it at runtime. So if you look at the deployment name, we'd see that we have a slightly different method of specifying a value. As we said, we don't have a releases file, but we have something called include followed by busybox.fullname. What's that? Let's explain what's happening here. Include is one of many functions that Go templates provide. Functions usually accept parameters and apply some processing over them. When editing a template, functions accept parameters on the same line separated by spaces. In this case, the include function takes busybox.fullName as the first parameter and a dot. Busybox.fullName refers to a sub-template, which is also referred to as a partial template or just partial for short. While full templates are meant to be converted into valid YAML manifests, sub-templates are designed as helpers. They host small chunks of code that can be reused in several places in the chart. For that reason, sub-templates are stored in a file called, well, helpers.tpl. And notice here that we have the TPL extension rather than YAML. This is just to indicate for you, the user, that this file is not meant to be a full Kubernetes manifest at the end. It's just meant to be a helper file. It can use partials or sub-templates. Additionally, it must start with an underscore. Any file that starts with an underscore in Helm is treated as a file that contains sub-templates, it will never be converted into a Kubernetes manifest. Now, let's have a look at this file. As you can see, we have the busybox.fullName defined using the define keyword. The body of this sub-template is beyond the scope of this video. We just need to understand that this code block gets processed and the include function inserts the output in the name field. Now, the second parameter that we have for the include function accepts something called a dot. The dot here specifies the scope that the sub-template can work in. For example, if we specify dot values as the scope, then we are restricting the scope of the partial template to this scope. This means that, for example, if we work with this template and use dot replica count to refer to the replica count variable or value, we won't need a prefix. We won't need to add dot values dot replica count because we are at the dot values scope. We are inside the values. So the replica count just refers to dot replica count in the values file. But this means that we are restricting ourselves to the dot values scope. This means that if you want, for example, to use the release name or something in the chart, we are not able to do this because they have different scopes. The chart lives in the dot chart scope and the dot release lives in the dot release scope. So in order to give this sub-template or partial template access to all the scopes in the chart, we use just the dot, followed by nothing, just the dot. So now we have an overview of how Helm templates look like and how they are converted into valid Kubernetes manifests. Let's now configure our Helm chart to serve Busybox instead of Nginx. First, we must change the default image name from Nginx to Busybox. The chart user can specify the image tag by modifying the image.tag value here. 
but we need to specify a default parameter. As we said, the Helm chart must define some sane defaults that will be applied when the user runs Helm install followed by the chart name without any parameters or values. So let's go to that chart.yaml file and let's change the app version to 1.36, which is the latest BusyBox image version at the time of this recording. Helm uses this app version from the chart.yaml file to determine the image tag unless the user of course overwrites this value as we mentioned using the image.tag value. Next, we move to the values file itself. BusyBox is used on the command line. It does not expose any ports and is normally not accessible over the network like Nginx. So we don't need the service or the ingress parts that got shipped with Nginx. So let's just delete them. Accordingly, we must also delete the service and ingress templates since we will not use them. The tests directory in the Helm chart includes some tests that can be applied to the Helm chart before installation. However, it relies on the service template. We are not using the service template, so we are not using tests in this lab, so just let's just delete this tests file. Moving to the deployment.yaml file, we must also remove the container ports and the readiness and liveness probes. Anything that refers to the service or the port or any network functionality of this container must be removed because, as we said, this BusyBox container is going to be run on the command line and it's not going to expose itself to the network or expose any ports. And while we are still in the deployment template, we must configure the container to run something when it starts. BusyBox by default as an image doesn't have any entry point, it's just there. You need to specify what command it runs when it starts. Otherwise, it will enter a crash loop back off. So we add a command parameter to the container and this command just starts a shell, so sh-c. And in this shell, we are just going to run the sleek command. The sleep command normally takes a number that refers to the number of seconds that it's going to sleep for. In our case, we want this container to be running like forever, like until it's deleted or killed. So we can have infinity as a command line argument to the sleep command. This way, sleep will sleep like forever. Whenever this container is running, it's just it will just keep running as long as sleep is running, which is infinity. So it will always keep running, which is our target. Finally, we can provide a help message to our chart users. When we deployed Nginx, the chart displayed some instructions for connecting to the web server, remember? Like for example, how to expose the port in, a, in an environment variable and then how to use port forward combined with the pod name and the, and the port name and the service name just to access Nginx from the browser. Let's do something similar to our BusyBox Helm chart. The instructions that appear to the user after the chart is installed are specified in a file called notes.txt. This is just another Go template file that has access to all the chart parameters the same way as any other template in the templates directory. The notes.txt file can be as easy or as complex as you want it to be, depending of course on the complexity of your application and the steps that are needed to use it or get inside it. So in our case, BusyBox is very simple and easy, so we want to instruct the user to start a shell inside the pod once the chart is deployed. The file that we have, like the boilerplate file, includes a line that exports the pod name in an environment variable. We can just make use of this line instead of just rewriting it, and we can remove the rest of the file. Now we can just display a help message to our users informing them that in order to attach a shell to the pod, they need to export the pod name using this command. Then they can just run kubectl exec hyphen it, then the pod name, which is stored now in an environment variable, then hyphen hyphen sh, which will start a shell inside the container. And that's all what's needed to configure a Helm chart to install BusyBox. Let's test our work. So let's go to the terminal and install the chart the same way we did with the Nginx one. The only difference here is that we specify the chart source as the local directory rather than the OCI URL that we did with Nginx. As you can see, the help message is displayed correctly. But before logging into the BusyBox pod, let's ensure that it's running. So let's run kubectl get pods. And as you can see, we have the BusyBox pod running. Now, let's copy and execute the instructions that the chart displayed. As you can see, we started a shell in the BusyBox container. All right, so now we have a Helm chart that deploys BusyBox. What if we want to share it with others? What if you want to deploy it to other clusters? Copying the directory around to each environment is just impractical. We need to package this chart and store it in a Helm registry. We can push this chart to any Docker registry since we are using the modern Helm version, which is like higher than 3.8.0, so we can use OCI support. This means that GCR, ECR, ACR, GitLab, Container Registry, and Quay.io are all valid options. In this lab, we will be using Docker Hub. So first, we need to package the Helm chart. That is, create a tar GZ archive containing the Helm directory and all its contents. Instead of doing this ourselves using the tar and gzip commands, we can use the helm package subcommand. This will automatically create the necessary archive. 
More importantly, it will read the chart version from the chart.yaml file and append it to the file name. This is needed so that we can identify the chart later, especially when it is pushed to the registry. We are pushing to Docker Hub, so we will need to log in using our credentials. Then we can push the Helm chart using the Helm push command, specifying the OCI URL of the Docker Hub registry. Once done, let's test that we can use this chart for deploying a second instance of BusyBox without needing to have the source on the disk. So to be 100% sure, let's delete the BusyBox chart directory as well as the packaged version. So we run rm-rf busybox and asterisks to delete anything that is related to BusyBox on this disk. Then we can install a Helm release of our chart the same way we did with Nginx at the start of this video. We just run helm install basicbox02, which is the name of our release, followed by the OCI repository URL that hosts our helm image. Notice how we are appending the name of the chart image to the URL when installing it, but we didn't do so when we pushed it to Docker. Docker automatically infers the image name from the file name. So make sure that when you push your image, you only specify the Docker Hub or your registry URL followed by your username, project name, or whatever your registry requires you to do, but do not add the image name at the end. This will automatically be added to you by the registry. However, when you pull the chart or the image from the registry, you will need to add it. Optionally, you can also add the version at the end. If you have many versions of your chart, you can pull the specific version by just writing its tag. Now, let's have a look at the pods that we have. As you can see, we have our BusyBox pods running from the second Helm release that we've just deployed. So, in this video, we discussed Helm, what it is, what problems it tries to solve. We also installed a sample Nginx Helm chart from an OCI repository. Then we explored the anatomy of a typical Helm chart and we configured it to install our very own application to a Kubernetes cluster. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my class Helm, the Kubernetes Package Manager hands-on course on Udemy. It contains all what we've covered in this video plus some extra topics, tips, and tricks. Please check it out, I will post a coupon that gives you over 90% discount on the class and I will post the course link in the description below. If the coupon expires, please comment on this video and I will update it. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay tuned for more DevOps and GitOps videos. My name is Ahmad, thank you for watching.